Hey guys, so I'm really excited. I've got a new product to bring to you today. This is heat transfer vinyl from a seller on Amazon. The name of the company is Press and Wear, and they have contacted me and asked me if I would try out their heat transfer vinyl and give it um, a run through the paces and see how it works and uh, post a little video. So I got this last week. It is Amazon Prime, so it came in two days. And so we are going to open it up. You get your um, little package here. Comes all nice and flat packed. Let's just take it out of the bag. And you get your instructions, which give you all the instructions about mirroring, mirroring your design, test cutting, heating, temperature. Um, it is a cold peel. And this is marketed as a heat transfer vinyl that is home iron friendly. So we are going to iron it on today. And I've got a design in mind, and we're going to get to that a little later in the video. But I wanted to show you what came in the pack first. And so today I'm going to iron, and we're going to do another test later on with the heat press, because you can use your heat press. But for those of you without a heat press, um, this might just be a great product that you can use for using your home iron. And then you get a little coupon code. They include that in the package. And then this is what you get. So we get 20 sheets and they are 12 inches by 10 inches. So you get a green and a sky blue and a mid blue, lemon yellow, yellow, golden yellow, orange, gold, and you get gray and silver and when you put them side by side you can really tell the difference and look at the sheen on that silver one and then pink purple red and then you get your neon so you get neon yellow orange pink and green oh and blue and then you get a sheet of black and white so this is what comes in the pack. Again, these are 12 inches by 10 inches. And so these are perfect for t-shirts. Most t-shirt designs are gonna be around 10 inches um, wide by 10 inches tall. And so these are really good. Um, you know, we're gonna use the whole width and we'll have a little extra um, there. Or you, I mean, you could even do a 12 inch wide design on your shirt and it's perfect. It's the perfect design for that. So you're not gonna have a lot of little pieces left over that you don't know what to do with. So we are going to go cut this and test it out in the Cameo and see how it cuts. And I'm gonna let y'all weed it with me and then we're gonna iron it on. I've got a fun little Halloween design picked out. And so we're gonna use the black and the neon green for that. And so I'm really excited and we'll be back in just a minute. All right, so we have got this all cut and I used a silhouette ratchet blade with the heat transfer smooth setting and got a great cut. You can see that I did my test cuts and it came out perfect on the first try. And um, so yeah, it was just the default silhouette setting. Uh, I believe it was blade depth of two, thickness of four, and then I just left it at a speed of eight because this was a simple design. And so now we're just going to weed this vinyl and I haven't weeded other than the test cuts. I've never weeded this before. Y'all are really getting a true first impression. And I know it's hard to see with the white background. So I'm just going to pull this and it's weeding very easy. It's coming up very easily. It's not tearing. It has a pretty matte appearance. It's kind of hard to tell what heat transfer vinyl is going to look like when it's on the carrier sheet. Uh, and this is really, this is really pretty. I really like the matte look of this. Um, that's really pretty. And again, I've turned up my color intensity some to try to show off how neon this is. Because it's hard to tell on camera. But I think that looks really awesome that we did great it cut great um, no problems at all so let's weed the black and 
I like it when I can weed and it just all comes up in, in one big piece like that. And you could trim around if you wanted to save these extra bits, whatever you could. I did trim off a little extra length um, to save for some more testing with the product. It's a really rich black, very matte. I really like how that looks. Again, I mean, it's just weeding great and not having any problems with it at all. The, the carrier sheet is sticky and that's great because it helps hold it onto your garment when you're lining it up to press. You can see there's some little pieces in here, little piece here, little piece here here and no problem some heat transfer vinyls those kind of like to lift up and they can be hard to keep in place until you press but did not have a problem at all with this Make sure I didn't miss any pieces it's really good so this is going to be really cool it's just for Halloween just going to go right on top like this so I wanted to do something that we were going to layer to really get a good feel for this heat transfer vinyl. So it's gonna go like that on the shirt. And I will link to this design as well on Etsy. Uh, so if you wanna get these, these lips, uh, you can do that. But yeah, so we're gonna go downstairs to the kitchen, um, which is where I heat press when I, or where I um, do heat transfer vinyl when I use my home iron because of my countertops down there. So we're going to carry this downstairs and see how it goes with an iron. See you in a minute. Okay, so I am set up in my kitchen and I just have my, this is an old iron that we used to use and now it's kind of become a craft iron. It is a sunbeam, nothing fancy. I don't put any water in it so I don't accidentally get any steam. You can see the bottom's a little... Uh, discolored, but it works great for heat transfer vinyl. We use it for perler beads, all kinds of stuff. So I've got a t-shirt and I've got my design that I have weeded and I'm working on my granite countertop. And you could put something underneath it because I'm pressing for such a short amount of time. I'm not super concerned about my counter. You really want a hard surface underneath your item when you're heat pressing with an iron. Um, something that's not going to have any give. And so that's why I do this down here. The table upstairs, um, if I were to press on it, it might buckle a little underneath and it's going to create a gap. And my iron's not going to have that contact. And you don't want to use your ironing board. So a tile from the hardware store or if you have tile floors or even you just can cut a wooden board from the hardware store um, that you can put on your on your kitchen counters if they can't withstand the heat just to give you a hard surface to press on so i'm just kind of ironing the shirt and we're going to do the green first because it's the bottom layer and so i'm just going to kind of eyeball it here and that's usually what I do. You want your design about three fingertips from the collar. And so I'm going to line that up, kind of look centered. And then you want to use like parchment paper or a Teflon sheet or something like that. So I have a Teflon sheet here. I'm just going to lay it down. And this is more to protect your iron than anything else. Could you iron without one? Yes, if you don't have a Teflon sheet or you don't have parchment paper, you could use a thin pillowcase or if you have old t-shirts that you could cut up so it's just like one layer of the t-shirt, I mean you could even use that. You don't want the carrier sheet to melt onto your iron. And so I'm going to start over here on the right and I'm just going to push down for about 10 seconds or so. And notice I'm not ironing it back and forth like our ironing a, a work shirt or something like that. I'm just holding it down in one spot. And then let's kind of pick a corner. And this is cold peel. So we've got to let it sit for a minute. 
and let it cool off. Okay, so we've cooled down. Let's see. So I've got it. It's good there, but I'm lifting a little here. So let's just press it a little longer. I might have missed that spot. So we're just going to come over here and press. And I've heard people talk about standing on their irons, putting all of their body weight on their iron to press, and that's typically not necessary. Uh, I'm on my kitchen counter, so I am having to kind of press from above my waistline, so it's a little harder to put pressure down, but I mean, this is what I did for a long time before I got my first heat press. And it's not, it's not necessary that, to apply that much force. You want to make sure that your temperature is correct. And so I have a laser temp gun that I've tested the different setting temperatures on my iron. And for this iron, the wool setting is about perfect. It falls in like that 300 to 320 range. The cotton's a little hotter on mine, so the cotton will actually damage my vinyl. So you really need to know what your iron is capable of. It's getting the right temperature for the right amount of time with some pressure, but definitely not standing on your on your press pressure. So again, we're cold peel, so we gotta let it cool off for a minute. And we're lifting. I'm going to go slow just to make sure where these breaks in the vinyl are that we're going to keep peeling. And it's great. I don't want to stretch out my shirt too much here. And there we go. So we have our first layer done. I'm going to line up the black. And one of the things I was curious about is it, heat transfer vinyl shrinks a little bit when you heat it. So I was curious to see how this would do in the green. Looks like it shrunk only a teeny tiny bit, which is good. And that's another thing about if you overheat too hot or for too long, you're going to shrink your vinyl. And nobody wants that. Let's just get this lined up. Heat transfer vinyl is so easy to layer because you can see through that carrier sheet and you can lift and replace over and over and over again until you get it exactly where you want it. Not like adhesive vinyl where kind of once it sticks, it's there. It's not going anywhere. Heat transfer vinyl and you can just keep picking it up and moving it around. Okay, so back to the um, Teflon sheet. Now let's say that your layer was only covering a small section so your carrier sheet wasn't protecting the rest of this. That's another time that having a protecting sheet like Teflon or parchment or something is really handy because you don't want to put a hot iron directly on heat transfer vinyl. So again, we're going to press. And the nice thing with this Teflon sheet, with it being kind of see-through, is I can see what my iron is over. If you were using a pillowcase or something like that, it might be a little harder to see if you were getting your entire design. Again, it's very important that you pay attention to the vinyl that you're using. If it's hot, cold, hot peel or cold peel, cold peel, you definitely, if you try to pull it up before it's cooled off, it's going to lift. And then you have to press it again and let it cool. You don't want to overpress. So pay attention to that. I'm just going to kind of smooth over it. And we're going to let it cool. But you really don't, don't be impatient. Let it cool completely. Just don't be like, oh, well, it's just warm. No, let it cool. It's going to make a big difference in how easily it peels off. All right, let's see. Perfect. Oh, 
got a little lifting right there. So let's put this back on. We don't want to get where I've already peeled. We already know that that's going to come up. So I'm trying to avoid going back over that. But that's why you want to go slow when you remove that carrier sheet. Okay, so now we have to let that cool again. We're almost there. It's cool down here. And again, go slow. So if you do have that issue, you can stop and fix it before you damage it. two layers and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw my Teflon sheet back on top and another good reason to let your vinyl cool if you have a heat transfer vinyl that's hot or cold peel if you let it cool off a little bit you're going to you're going to be less likely to wrinkle your vinyl so it kind of stretches the fabric in the vinyl if it's hot and then as it cools it kind of keeps that wrinkle There we are. I think that looks really cool. No, it's been upside down for you guys. So here we are. It is a nice matte finish. It's pretty smooth. It feels good. It's soft to the hand. It doesn't feel plasticky. Um, it's supposed to have a little bit of stretch. I believe this is a Yes, 100% cotton shirt, so it's not going to have a lot of stretch on its own. But, yeah, look at that. It's stretching. It seems to handle it fine. No, the fabric doesn't stretch that much. I don't know how this compares to a vinyl made to stretch, but it seems, seems pretty good. So I'm really excited. I think it turned out really good. Let's go take some pictures.